right. We'll have not been around for a while. My last video was that was a Christmas Eve when I did the Santa Claus face. Not that too many people were interested, but I guess people were doing their Christmas thing. And uh, uh, so I haven't done a lot of stuff, and I have reasons for that. We went to Panama City at Christmas. I decided to um, rip off my mask and go out into public. That would be the first time I did it and since the beginning of the plague. I mean, I've gone, I go to the grocery store and things like that, but I wear, I, I mask up, even though there's very few of us now still doing that, especially here in Tallahassee. You know, that, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, so I went to the seafood store, uh, restaurant, had one of the worst vegetarian burgers I've ever had in my life. Obviously they're, they don't cater to folks like me. They had some uh, cauliflower that was breaded and baked that was actually very good. Um, and of course I had some uh, sweet potato fries and I love sweet potato fries. Put some hot sauce on those bad boys and yummy. So um, next day, Christmas day, we're in Panama City and I'm not feeling great. We're supposed to stay another couple of days, stay another couple of days. And we um, decided to uh, head on out. Now, it's about a three hour drive, two and a half, three hours, the way my wife and I go. Yeah. Two hours and 45 minutes. Um, so, Anyway, it's a, it's a pretty drive. A little road called Highway 20. Goes through, so there's this kind of suburb of Panama City that you drive through that's um, got to be some where the mucky mucks have their ranches because it's like the, you know, the white crossed painted fence, wooden fence, and horses in the front yard and but Trump flags all down driveways and hanging over the fences not all of them but there were there was two or three and then there's one guy out there in a, in a little town I can't remember the name of the town Hen, Henderson, Henson or something like that that's you know population 100 and it's like a little crossroads really but he's always out there every year he's got his confederate flag up uh, and then we saw some other guy some other old redneck who looked really down and out and he was carrying this enormous american flag just down the street <laughs> so we're like okay there weren't too many people out so it was more like just a weird movie. Anyway, made it home, got sick. I, I did that silly video of the me, AI of me as Santa Claus and, you know, peace on earth and all that. Um, I don't have that much faith in humans, but I figured, ah, Christmas time, I might as well say something semi nice. <laughs> anyway, so from Christmas Day, I really get sick. My daughter was supposed to come back you know, a couple of days before New Year's and spend some time with us, but you know, I said, "Look, I am, I'm, I am sick. I mean, I'm coughing up bizarre." 
colorful stuff out of my lungs and my sinuses were going nuts. I was trying to dry them out by snorting warm salt water, which actually works really well. It's just that it's real uncomfortable to do it in the first place. So she came, but she didn't stay. She she put on a mask and we met at, and we have a little outside of our bedroom, we have a nice little screened in porch for the summer times. So we can sit out there in the mornings and have coffee and not be eaten by bugs. And, uh, but I was disappointed that I couldn't spend more time with her. And she's going on a, a jazz cruise, which she just got finished doing with a guy named Kurt Schelling, who's a really a great jazz singer and who's on, um, does these tours and Kate goes along. She's teaching, but she got permission to, from her school to go and do this because it's kind of culturally something or other. I don't know. So they actually went to Haiti <coughs> and cruised around the Caribbean. Anyway, so that was it. I was sick for probably until the uh, week, in, week to a week and a half into by the second week of January, I started, you know, getting up and walking up to the mailbox and taking the garbage out and starting to do things that I normally do, you know. Not everything. You know, my poor wife was bringing me food to bed, and which she still does. If you can believe how having a, somebody so nice that cares about you so much that they bring you your coffee in the morning to your bed so you don't have to get out if you don't feel like it. Some mornings I get out, but very rarely. I mean, I, I'm a night owl from so many years of working, you know, rock and roll, shit kicker bars, you know, almost 30 years. And uh, I never really had the the slickness to do a solo act or I probably would have kept going and maybe done some afternoon thing. But anyway, I, you know, She was there with me for a lot, you know, heart attacks and quadruple bypass surgery I had. This is like over 10 years ago now, maybe even 13, 14 years ago. And then I had a, during the end of the COVID time, I got a blood clot in my heart and nobody would tell me what it was because we live in Florida. Yeah, that's a whole other story. So in the meantime, I got um, this MX AV Linux MX23 came out. And it was all brand new. I had a brand new desktop on it called Enlightenment. Which, hmm... A new um, terminal called Terminology, not XFCE, which is what I'm used to. So, I don't know. And then the big one was pipe wire. I have this thing's running pipe wire. So I made a made an ISO on a USB stick inside of um, MX Linux because it has its own little program. That's a, I don't think it's, called, it might be still be called Disk Maker, I don't know, but it's beautiful. It's like if you've ever used any of those other, like Etcher or, um, oh, there's two or three of them. They come in and they live in your RAM, but they make this, 
you know, they'll put together a, you download a zip file from somewhere or a tar file. And um, although in the, this MX Linux, um, if you go to uh, the band shed, which is what I suggest everybody does if you're going to get into MX Linux, you go to the bandshed.net account and go to the downloads off of his page and he has them all right there there's four of them you want to just download all four of them but i think if you just hit one they all go because they're the sha check you know the the three different shahs that check to make sure that your um everything is kosher so i downloaded that into my download page and i Made a special, other special page for that called Ardor. I have Ardor. I have everything that I've ever downloaded in, in Ardor in the zip files. You know, I don't, I didn't throw any of that stuff away. All the way from 6.9 I have all the way up to now it's 8.2, I believe. And that should be installed the latest and greatest should be installed on this machine. I have not opened Arter yet. Because um, he, of some other reasons, I just. So the first thing that happened was Terminal took a crap. I was trying to resize it because every time I get a new distro, I have to, uh, excuse me, my ass is hurting. I have to move it around. Um, I have to reshape it. I have to make the fonts bigger. I got to get rid of the opacity. I want a dark background. And I I don't really need it to take up the whole screen because I have a 24-inch TV screen that's only about a foot in front of me right here. Um, so in the process of doing that, I was messing with the settings and I think I hit something that said maximize and this thing went boosh it like took off three feet past the screen and the lettering was just gigantic it was taking out the whole I'd say a third of the corner of my you know so I had to like use my mouse like a fishing pole and drag this thing all the way back because the only way to get to the, at least in this, now I've realized I can hit the right button anywhere in the terminal and it'll bring the settings up, but it wasn't doing that. I had to get all the way to the end and the settings would come up. So then I reconfigured it, got it just how I liked it. It was nice. I actually did a... Um, uh, app get upgrade and then, then I did an app get download because down here the little terminal marker or not terminal marker but it's a uh, uh, upgrader or whatever MX upgrade it doesn't work by the way but it does show you that you have something it lights up a little button and it will even tell you on the front of it how many programs it wants you to download so that is pretty handy and I said well I don't mind I'll just go to the terminal and uh, use app get no problems downloaded it did that twice but each time I had to go and do that whole rigmarole where I was dragging the terminal back in after the third day the terminal disappeared and I would hit the icon down here on the bottom bar and it would just say um, enchantment can't load that program well I started looking around for the fix for that wasn't anything on the internet so the next time I got some um, I got about eight things to download so I figured well <clears throat> I saw synaptic on there in the application so I'll give that a shot see what happens 
because I was still determined I'm going to fix all this myself because I'm becoming like an intermediate Linux guy now, you know? <laughs> what a joke. So I get synaptic. Excuse me. <coughs> and it worked. And, you know, mark the ones that um, to be upgraded. Then hit apply and and I look down here again at the the thing that doesn't work but tells you what's in it. And, uh, MX update updater or something like that. And boom, it had done it. So now your system's up to date. So after about two more days, and I kept looking around trying to solve the problems. I was, I had found these things like a system control function, you know, some some things that I had found that I could type into the terminal. And um, I realized that I had a X term and UX term on here, which I was a tiny bit familiar with. I fooled around with them when I had MX21. So I got X term out, and that's what I used. You know, it speaks uh, to Bane or whatever that app get, and it speaks uh, to package. I don't know how to say that either. I'm sure there's a way. You know, with all these uh, Linux terms, I've heard them pronounced so many different ways. You never really get that somebody should write a phonetic little language thing of how you say each one of these, like package managers. I mean, Pac-Man's no problem. It's just like the old game, right? It's even spelt the same. Uh... So, you know, and I'm going, okay, well, this is, all sucks. And I still I had the original ISO, and I really didn't have anything loaded onto the machine. So it didn't matter. I could have changed it out. So I went into, after about four days, I said, well, let me, let me go ahead and see how, what's going to happen with OBS, you know, because it was loaded on the machine. Um... But I had been to, um, I went into Ardor. Uh, Ardor I kept on the Alsa, now that you have choices in it. So you, you, can, you go into Alpha uh, Alsa now and you have a choice between, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Adore, and you have a choice between running your Alsa, and that's if you're not gonna leave the inside of the program. Not going to run something from outside, like you know, Guitar X, I guess, or uh, um, uh, you know, the drum machine, the great little drum machine that's in on on all the nitro nitrogen or whatever it's called, and then the Yoshimi show Yoshimi synthesizer, which is gr a great synthesizer. So I went in to Arter, and, and everything seemed to work. It had, Arter had already gone in and figured out my M2 and loaded it up. I was, I was going, hey, all right. I'm halfway there. It was making sounds. I whipped up a couple of synthesizers and loaded a piano, loaded a, some strings, checked to make sure my uh, microphone was coming through, no problem. Hooked a guitar up, played a little bit, no problem. So I didn't think too much about Ardor. I just figured, well, Ardor's just working okay, so I'm not going to... It had not saved any of my songs I was working on before, but that wasn't any great loss. I wasn't, you know, it'd take me a minute to put those things back together. Uh, so, you know, I'm still plodding along, and I'm still thinking, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this. I'm going to learn how to fix this. It's got to be something I can do, like in F disk or uh, you know something like that. So then, then the next thing that starts happening, 
when I go into OBS and I'm trying to get all of a sudden OBS stopped working and I'm like, oh, crap, now what? So, you know, how you, in OBS, you run this, the system settings and, you know, that tool, which I've always had to modify that. And, um, there was something wrong with OBS. Pipe wire wouldn't work. I tried to look at what was going on in pipe wire and the Carla thing that it has. And they built a Carla that's just for pipe wire. Didn't say anything was wrong, but there was a lot of things missing where there should have been about, you know, 10 things that the computer recognized that should have been sitting there ready to go. So anyway, it was, I spent two weeks just screwing around with that. I don't consider it a loss. I consider it a going to school. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about, um, in the control systems, I learned a lot about how to try to unmount your drive and uh, we, uh, uh, trying to unmount an individual program. You can't do that. You have to unmount, you can only unmount the whole drive. Which was the first time I thought to myself, well, you know what? Might not be a bad idea to uh, petition you know, make your boot petition completely separate and then have your a petition f to run your programs and then a storage. I, but I do that anyway because I have a whole nother terabyte that, um, and I have a exterior 500 gigabyte it's only got about 40 gigs used on it. So I have plenty of storage. So anyway, I wish I would have made a video of the way that the um, pipe wire, you know, menu was working. I was, I would hit like, <coughs> you know, what, what's the uh, box I'm using. Now, I've already gone into the machine and told it I want the M2 and I want it to be default. And every time I went back into that, it had changed again. Like something was going in there and changing it, or it was changing itself. So by this time, the machine is pretty fucked up. The only thing that's working is X-Term. <laughs> So, and it was telling me all kinds of stuff. So I went in and I, there, there was a, a way to go down and shut down all the processes that are going on inside of that, of your um, disk space in order to, um, so you can unmount it, right? Because you can't run F disk or any of those kind of things on a running um, disk. You just can't do it. You could destroy your whole system. I think you could even damage your the physical disk. And the the drives I have in this machine are NIMVI drives. You know, they're the little tiny ones. I have a one terabyte. But I have everything on, no petitions, just everything's on there. The boot, the, you know, my root directory's on there, right along with my home, everything's just all right there. So, I mean, I still gotta get permission to go in, into the root, anything. And I gotta get permission to go to the other storage drive. And for some reason, I don't have to have permission to go into my exterior Samsung drive. So, 
Anyway, neither here nor there. It was all screwed up. I tried to get it to go into a grub at the end. Would never, I could never get it to do it. And then I was reading that you can get a, if you hit the shift or the F2 button, tapping the F2 button, some people said just do both if you don't know. So I did both. And sure enough, I could see F disk up in the corner, you know, during the boot process. But it would only be there for a split second. It would never stop. And I tried about four times. Because apparently, if you can get it to stop there, you can go in and, you know, tell it to uh, uh, repair itself, or, or at least try to. Could never get it to happen. I got really frustrated, and so after a couple of weeks, I just said, yeah, screw it. I shoved the USB in. I do. I did on this machine. Have to go in and tell the um, the bias or the um, UEFI to uh, you know. I wanted the boot from the you know USB ISO, and so it did it, and. This is it. I've had this up and running now for about a week or so. I haven't gotten all the way. I, I Here's my OBS. I've been working on it for a f couple of days, actually, because um, it just wasn't configured right. It wanted to capture, um, and I believe that's another pipe wire thing, because pipe wires the genius of pipe wire, and I'm sure eventually when they work out, the, the bugs work out of it, is that it captures video sources plus all the audio sources. And, but I still think it's got some shenanigans going on down in there somewhere. So, I'm going to take my time when I go back to Ardor. But Ardor was the only thing that seemed to work well with pipe wire. Everything else was like... So I finally have this figured out. I'm just going to... I'm just using the Pulse audio. And that's coming off of my M2. So this seems to be working fine. So... Anyway, fingers crossed... I'm still a little bit skeptical of the enchantment. I got some, I'm writing down some things I don't like about it. And uh, there are some things I like about it. So, you know, and, and in the end, it's all just a matter of what you're willing to uh, uh, get used to. Um, I'm still, I was getting so used to my <laughs> MX-21 and um, I was really comfortable there. I mean, it worked really good. I I love that machine. So, and I can always turn this back into that machine if I want to, because it's going to be actually um, supported until for another. I don't know if it's going to be supported. I think that this year they're going to stop the some level of support, but then they're going to keep upgrading it, you know, until um, 2026. I think this one gets upgraded all the way till 2028 or 2030. So. That's more what I'm looking at, because these were these are definitely be the last years I'm gonna be trying to make any kind of music. I'm struggling even now with 
you know, my guitar chops, I keep practicing and trying, but I just don't have what I used to. And being the perfectionist that I am, I don't want to, I guess I'm egotistical enough where I don't want to sound half-assed. So that's kind of holding me back from doing anything musical. Um, anyway, I, I will do it because regardless of, you know, I don't know what that was all about, but I don't know if that went blank or not, but regardless of how that um, transpires, I will make some noise on here. I might do it sight unseen. I know I'm going to make some recordings in Arter and play them, but the idea of playing live on here and having to practice hard enough to make that all sound good is a, is a little daunting for me. You know, I can do, I can record on a DAW and um, comp it all out and, you know, do, uh, you know, play 10 tracks on top of each other and cut out the best parts and put it all together. You know, I, can, I don't have a problem with any of that. And I can still make some decent sounding tunes that way, which I will continue to do in the future. But this whole playing live for even a few hundred people, but probably going to be more like uh, thousands of people before I'm done, I'd like to get to a point where I'm making like little movies that are behind me, like AI movies, like something like this or like this, where it's moving and you're going through it. I can be standing right there in the middle of it and playing some psychedelic guitar shit. But in any case, so here we are in this new. AV Linux thing. So far, I've had it up and running for about five days. It's been running good. I got OBS working good. I've got, I put some games on here to entertain myself. I've got, um, uh, I changed the sidebar on this thing so I can um, do some other deals. It has OpenShot installed and I love OpenShot. I'll get into that one day. Um, anyway, that's it. Buenas noches, mi amigas. Mi amigas. Uh, I hope everybody's well. And, uh, <laughs> good night. Let me, f let me find my key button over here and see if, make sure it's the right one. I think this will turn it off. <laughs> By the time I get done doing this, I'll have all this figured out, you know. <laughs>